I will not be waiting an order from the organizers and we'll start the session. Dear guests, dear friends, I'm glad to welcome you here. And some of you have come uh, here after the uh, previous round table. And today we will be talking about entering and working on the Chinese market under a Russian brand. Dear participants, I'm glad to welcome you here in St. Petersburg. And let's start our session today. It's not a secret that uh, we have uh, hit the record in terms of the trade turnover, 200 billion and most probably 220 billion. And uh, China has, always, has almost caught up with the volume of the EU in the past and uh, the food export and agricultural uh, fish um, export are the leading ones and uh, we are capturing all the Chinese market and the figures are the following as the result of this year the growth of uh, exports of bioresources is uh, 70 80 percent more than last year it amounted to 1.5 billion us dollars and we are exporting the production of agricultural complex which is in volume bigger than it used to be in weapons in the past but our main task to move from an ordinary uh, feedstock to move to uh, the products with high VAT and today we will We'll be discussing all those matters and many uh, producers have registered their brands on the Chinese markets and there are certain barriers and restrictions uh, in terms of the shelf life and uh, there are opportunities to overcome those barriers. We will be asking these questions to our speakers. It's a huge market but a complicated one as well. So we'll be focusing on that. I'd like to give the floor to our first speaker, Mr. Alex Kobikov, director, FAO, liaison office with the uh, Russian Federation. I will explain to you what FAO is. It's a, a food agricultural organization of the United Nations. And uh, Oleg, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, distinguished colleagues and uh, experts and guests. It's an honor and trust vested in us to open this interesting discussion. And it is one of the most relevant and uh, topical matters in uh, uh, fish trade. It's not a secret that China is the leading uh, producer on the market and also a consumer of um, natural and uh, um, aquaculture products and indicators are growing in terms of production, in terms of consumption as uh, well, and it is growing quite fast uh, due to uh, more purchasing capability of um, the population and uh, the state of um, the Chinese market was mentioned by Mr. Johnson Lan at the plenary session, and uh, he said that um, they have st struck the balance between the production and the consumption. I'm not quite sure that the situation is uh, like this in the economy. And uh, it has to do with the growth in the income of the population and the growing demand uh, for uh, fish products like live crabs. Um, in China, they do love uh, these crabs. And uh, you know uh, how difficult it is to organize such fragile um, product to the, to the market. And uh, what about the clicker? The next slide, please. I'll show to you some understandable pictures and gra graphs that will characterize the general picture in the production, the catch, and the growing in uh, aqu aquaculture. And the trend is the following one. The volume of production in aquaculture exceeds the uh, volume in industrial catch. And these are the data for 2020. Since then, the point of Lagrange uh, has been uh, overcome over 
and um, it happened in 2021, 2022, and uh, LGI and Hydrobiont, this volume is growing as well, and this trend uh, will be preserved in future as well. The next slide, please. So here we give the curves of the growth starting from 1950 up to 2018 per capita. The growth, we can see it here. Some um, data is out there, some figures are outdated. But if we compare the data from 1960 to 2018 over the last uh, 58 years, the consumption of fish and fish products has grown two times worldwide and by 2030 the forecast is that it will grow and will reach the amount of uh, 22.3 kilos uh, per capita and that is the norm that has been uh, re uh, recommended by the World Health Organization and some uh, countries have set more ambitious tasks like Saudi Arabia uh, there in 2019 it used to be 8.5 kilos and now they have reached the amount of 14 kilos and by 20 30, they plan to uh, reach the indicator of 30 uh, kilos. And when they use uh, state-of-the-art uh, technologies and political will, it is easier to achieve. But getting back to the Chinese market, the role of China in fish products and the growing capacity plays a very important part. And in FAO, we have a quarterly forecast of the prices for the uh, domestic market in China. So here we have a good illustration. We'll not go deep into detail in terms of aquaculture production. You see the position that they occupy. And uh, th this is the prize winning products in aquaculture in um, East Asia and um, China. So this is the uh, research. This is a study that is available on uh, the internet. And um, uh, it is published uh, together with uh, the marketing association in China once in four years. And uh, it is not very huge, so you can easily read it. And it contains quite, quite simple understandable uh, data. I will show you some pages and uh, you can get this brochure at uh, our Pavilion G stand of FAO. And uh, those of you who do not get the full version, you can download that uh, by using the QR code. It was translated into Russian. This is the second time that we are translating that into Russian because uh, Russian public is uh, very much interested in all of this uh, data, primarily fish producers. So that is how it looks in the original, in the English language. So we will discuss some a uh, major matters in terms of uh, uh, specific um, fish products. So here we have the textual description, the dynamic in terms of the month. And um, uh, you can see that consumption in China as well as in Russia is growing uh, when um, New Year is approaching and some other holidays, Chinese New Year, 8th of March, and then it decreases. And some traditional species of um, uh, fish that have been uh, grown in aquaculture um, and um, here we can see this, these figures. So we see some perch, the traditional uh, fish that has been uh, grown there. 
And uh, that is the lot that our fish producers have been selling quite successfully on the Chinese markets. And uh, also the white uh, leg uh, prawn, uh, which is in massive uh, aquaculture production. It, it is also growing in um, many Asian countries, and China is well known uh, for it. And uh, also the hybrid Calcon is uh, another species that is growing in industrial uh, fish production. The next slide, please. So these pictures, we don't have more than 10 of them. Um, we also have a detailed table featuring the data. And according to our data, when we were publishing the bulletin, we have the equivalent for the EU market, for the global market. And we were actually answering the needs of uh, major players. And uh, this is uh, substantial uh, information, quite sufficient for these needs. And at the beginning of this publication, we uh, give information about uh, the um, actions that have been taken by Chinese authorities in order to regulate and monitor the market. And they can uh, influence their trends on the market. Two years ago, China banned all the frozen food just uh, as a precaution, which is allowed by WTO regulation, apprehensive that either the fish or its package uh, could carry virus. Uh, and uh, two years ago, speaking over here, I said that uh, neither FAO nor scientific com community has uh, reliable data that uh, COVID virus uh, could uh, be uh, carried uh, by the fish products and uh, the fishing community were thankful to me for these words. I would like to thank you once again for the opportunity to have my talk and I wish you success at this uh, difficult but uh, promising market and uh, I will be prepared to answer your questions at the end. Thank you for your useful input and uh, for detailed uh, presentation and indeed Indeed, uh, you have referred uh, to the challenges of the pandemic. We have overcome uh, those uh, uh, challenges. And uh, right now, we do have a certain challenge of uh, Fukushima. And uh, we are catching uh, fish in the same water area as Japan does. But I think we will overcome this challenge as well. The giving floor to Mr. Mikhailevich uh, of the Federal Fishing Agency. I would like to give two facts uh, for the audience. If uh, uh, you are not aware about the fishing industry in China, China accounts for 40% uh, of uh, the fishing catch uh, and uh, fish uh, for half uh, of uh, the Chinese population and the, its uh, um, marine country. Fish is the main source of uh, protein. So it's not the issue of uh, economics and business. It's the issue of food security. and. Uh, this should be taken into account because it's a difficult industry and the challenges of the pandemic are not related only to business but to the other factors as well. Before Andre starts speaking, I would like to ask a question. It's about the position of uh, the agency, about the position of exports to the Chinese market. And uh, the question is, why is uh, the products uh, being exported? Exported to China through Korea, not directly. And another question related to our discussion: What measures uh, are available to promote uh, high-value-added uh, products uh, to to China? The floor is yours. Uh, I would like to welcome the speakers. I cannot but uh, respond to the question of the moderator regarding Fukushima. Bearing on the hot sea are pretty far away. Y yes, that, that, that's true. And uh, so uh, the Fukushima does not affect the Barents and the hot sea. So uh, the catch over there is uh, clean and pure. I recommend it all. 
talking about the South Korea, it's a great hub, and uh, it's not only uh, to China that uh, the products are going from Korea, but to the other countries as well. And uh, then uh, quite a lot of services are received in South Korea. It is uh, ship repair and uh, services. It doesn't mean that uh, we should uh, uh, act uh, uh, like that in the future. We should uh, uh, develop different approaches. Uh, since noughties and the 90s, the Chinese uh, companies uh, have uh, provided uh, a helping hand to Russian companies buying products uh, they have been crediting fishing companies. And uh, then and, uh, we have uh, been uh, catching less less than 4 million tons of the bioresources and that uh, the import let's uh, take the year of 2013 was more than 1 million tons it was 1.7 million tons in imported and the situation has changed considerably by 2017 uh, we managed uh, to exceed 5 million tons uh, of uh, catch of the bio resources and the import to Russia has been going down less than 500,000 tons in 2022 so it's a reduction by a factor of uh, 2 but what is important uh, the the figures dating back to 10 years or even five years uh, indicate that 85 percent of their products taken uh, to the other countries whether for processing or retail has uh, changed and uh, you might be aware and uh, it was uh, mentioned at the plenary session that 80 percent of the products uh, are value added whether it's uh, grinded uh, flesh uh, or fillet or etc and so i presume today we should uh, take uh, both about the established markets but at the same time we should think about the prospects if uh, the uh, the fish is uh, processed either at uh, aboard the ships of the fishing vessels or at uh, the canning facilities that have been built in Kamchatka or in the Far East, we should uh, advance to a different niche of the market in China because China is uh, populous and they have a high purchasing power. We studied the issue in Russia when Norwegian salmon entered uh, Russian markets uh, some uh, 20 years ago. It was not traditional because we didn't have at the time of the Soviet Union in the 90s. It was uh, being developed and uh, right now virtually all the restaurants uh, have uh, dishes uh, from salmon from uh, Norway. And uh, we might uh, have the same approach for importing our food products to China. Maybe be exporting semi-finished uh, goods and uh, there was a study performed and China is ready to receive the products and we are ready to supply. As far as the support measures is concerned, the ministry and agency provide some measures and uh, I can uh, tell you about the Agri Ministry of Agriculture. and. Uh, talking about uh, the decree 719 if uh, the facility is being constructed at the, the by the the company the ministry will uh, compensate 20 uh, percent and uh, some other deductions and uh, subsidies could be could be provided and uh, there are Chinese companies that have their measure support over there. But uh, we are prepared uh, to look into different initiatives if they will positively affect the economy. So I suggest that uh, we should uh, debate and talk about uh, the market of uh, the finished goods from uh, from fish in China. Yes, that's a, that's a good uh, observation, especially it's important uh, for our Chinese uh, colleagues. First, we do not have any 
relations uh, to Fukushima, and uh, there are no oceanic currents uh, that uh, take uh, the radionuclides uh, to the Barents and Ochotsk Sea. So that's why our products uh, are eco uh, environmentally, ecologically safe, and we know what's the attitude of China towards uh, the fish from uh, Japan. I would like to give a floor to the representative of the Russian Export Center that would mention there are major stakeholders in Russia, traditional, and the supplying to the Chinese market. And there are new players because the Chinese market is growing. It's very lucrative. And I, will, I wonder what measures could be provided by the association and how can you possibly help the exporters. Thank you, Nikolai. Talking about the promotion and uh, the first thing important uh, for the new players and the old one is to register the trademark and to protect the IPR. And uh, it could be done to turn to my export of the export rule and uh, to file in some questionnaires, uh, applications, and you will receive a list of the contractors that will help you to uh, go through the motions and uh, through the procedures. And uh, you should pay the duties and uh, you can compensate those. Talking about the full cycle export of our products, then you should uh, get the automatic uh, analytical reports and uh, they are break broken down by years uh, and there is information on uh, customs re regulations and barriers and uh, Andre was right in saying about uh, promotion it's uh, a continuation of the question of uh, Nikolai. It is uh, participating in the exhibitions and business missions. In 2023, we will have four events in uh, China, and there will be another one in 2025. It is in China. It is uh, import-export. And uh, there are other exhibitions, and uh, there are m many business missions. And if you are a large uh, manufacturer, large producer, you can uh, uh, receive subsidies, and we will compensate 50% of uh, the uh, rent uh, of the room and uh, the delivery of the samples to the exhibitions, and uh, you can also cooperate uh, with the, our demonstration pavilion. It is a standing pavilion, and uh, it is actually an uh, anchor, a hub, and you will have your products uh, continuously there. It is free of charge uh, for you. Your task is just to observe uh, the uh, shelf life of the product. For example, you made a contract with the distributor and uh, the pavilion is uh, to demonstrate your products. Another task of the pavilion is promotion of their products. Uh, uh, we work uh, with the chains, with the distributors, and uh, uh, they, those Chinese companies provide support as well. One of the important support measures to promote uh, the products of the new uh, actors, those uh, who can offer uh, finished goods, uh, it is uh, working with the e-commerce uh, platforms. We are co cooperating with the nine e-platforms uh, like uh, Taobao, Tmall, the other. Altogether, there are nine. And uh, the e-commerce uh, platforms, they are actually national uh, stores, national outlets, and uh, they are administered by our contractors. Uh, they buy the products themselves and they promote the products. And uh, there are different channels of distributions, working with famous uh, bloggers, uh, athletes, uh, state authorities, etc and promoting at the e-commerce uh, platform itself. And uh, uh, it is uh, just uh, assigning a higher uh, position at for the search. 
getting to the professional expert platform, you can study it. There are many contractors at present. Many of them are on the lookout for partners. That kind of service is uh, not free of charge. You have to pay for it, but uh, it will be quite useful for you to interact with uh, these uh, contractors. And we have uh, a person, his name is Maxim Fedotov. Uh, he works in, he's located in China, and uh, he can be tasked uh, to get in touch uh, with the distributors, and uh, it is possible to request uh, the documentation of that uh, company to study that uh, to to receive uh, the, their their reports of their activity and uh, he can also organize a meeting he can uh, also help you at the meeting and uh, that's uh, another possible way so that's about it uh, as Andre said it is necessary uh, not only to supply just uh, raw materials, but uh, high added value products. And uh, we can help you to get uh, funding to develop expert-oriented uh, production and to get the insurance. And uh, we can involve uh, both uh, Russian and uh, foreign overseas banks to open uh, production either in Russia or in uh, China. And all these uh, support uh, measures are part and parcel of uh, the program that was uh, developed in uh, Russia. Many countries uh, have their own programs uh, of promoting their own products. Norway, Canada, and uh, we in Russia implement this uh, program. And uh, we cannot say that uh, we have just started the program, but uh, we are making first steps uh, in the fishery industry. And uh, we invite uh, you to take uh, part uh, in uh, making the brief uh, for the program, like what marketing promotional campaigns uh, for fishery industry are the most uh, successful. So we will be doing the brainstorming and uh, we invite you to take part uh, in uh, our activity. That's uh, Nikolai, the, the main measures of how we are working. Alexander, thank you very much. I'd like to focus on two points that you've mentioned. So we need marketing research in terms of preferences, food preferences, and uh, these are serious differences between Russia and China. So we need to specifically study the situation and then start uh, acting not only for fish products. And the second point that you've identified, electronic channels for selling products, it uh, has become much easier. The pandemic has facilitated uh, the development of electronic platforms. We have three speakers from the partnership side. I'd like to give the floor now to Ms. Palen Palina Yan, uh, Business Development Manager from GD Worldwide, Jingdong Retail Group. You know all, you all know Alibaba and uh, JD is uh, number two two in Chinese, um, in China, it's a large player. We traditionally know that there are two methods to sell uh, fish and seafood and offline chains and uh, large markets. Uh, it is prospering in China. You know, all of that um, based on the data that we got since 2020. And there is the second channel electronic trade. So two important questions to Ms. Yan. So what are the conditions to get into those platforms to comply with? And the second question is about the opportunities that are given to our players if they enter uh, JD. So the floor is yours, please. Yes, I will respond to the questions that you've asked me. So allow me to tell you more uh, about myself. My name is Paulina Yan, and I'm from Tundun Company, Business Development Manager, and I'm responsible for uh, retail sales. And uh, you asked me a question. 
why is it necessary? On the screen, you can see traditional schemes of selling and a cross-border approach towards uh, the trade. And uh, you can see the difference that exists in various modes of trade. So here we can see that some actions are required in traditional scheme. You have to register a trademark in China. And if we enter an electronic platform, it is not needed. And um, personally for us, it is um, for us it is sufficient to get the data provided by a seller the data about the products that they're, they're selling and so on and so forth in traditional trade if a seller would like to sell some products to consumers they have to obtain certain certificates and here it's quite complicated Besides, we undertake certain expenses, many expenses. Thus, if there is a certain subject of the trade, they have um, their solutions and licenses in their own country. So we're helping them to enter the Chinese market and so that uh, the products can be um, seen on our Chinese markets. And uh, as for your second question, what opportunities are we giving on this platform and what are the services? So we give you a, a comprehensive set of services, logistical ones, logistic support, the full package of solutions related to uh, transportation of goods, of products, and our scheme helps you to uh, ensure door-to-door -door logistics service, and it includes um, both national transportation and international one. So it's a, a comprehensive solution. In Ningbo, we have a special uh, warehouse facility, and there, we render the services of storage and first class services of transportation because we give other services as well related to trade. And it helps our foreign clients to enter the Chinese market. And we render also uh, consulting support uh, to find a better way to sell products. And of course, it, uh, it uh, helps us to grow the selling volume. And this is the warehouse in Ningbo that I've mentioned. And uh, the uh, area, the total area amounts to uh, 18,000 square meters, and we have uh, various levels. The cool uh, storage with the um, permanent temperature that is maintained in order to provide for specific conditions for the storage of those products. Besides that, in our warehouse facility in Ningbo, we have 48 hours the distribution timeline and we can deliver those products to four provinces and cities on this picture you can see uh, various colors for uh, for example 48 hours this is the red zone and blue zone for 72 hours and uh, green uh, is for four days and gray zone is for seven days Besides, you can also see uh, various types of interfaces that uh, will help you to uh, find, to look for some products. And this is a um, so-called multi-entrance service. And you can enter our platform here and look for what you need on the right. 
you can see GD worldwide interface and supermarket of uh, some foreign goods. This is the third picture. So we use various types of interfaces, various types of entrances, and uh, consumers can uh, use those uh, tools and buy uh, the products they need. So here we have uh, the examples of some fresh food, and we have uh, various uh, types of them, the lists of um, fresh food that we are offering. And in terms of the seafood, here we have refrigerated food like, uh, for example, shrimps and prawns, and also canned seafood as well. And the last part I'd like to mention for foreign companies to get into the Chinese market and sell it to Chinese consumers, it is necessary to be registered in their own company, uh, in their own country. So it has to be official. It has to have all the licenses and uh, the right to sell and export those products. Of course, they have to have their corporate bank account. And then the model can be uh, selected. It can be direct uh, um, or through the warehouse. We have a Ninbo. So this is it for my presentation. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Ms. Yan, for this detailed report. It's quite interesting. We would like to wish uh, your company, JD Worldwide, uh, success and um, various uh, players uh, can be interested in this uh, interesting channel in electronic commerce because you have uh, a very well-developed infrastructure. You've raised uh, uh, this point about having the full cycle where house uh, facility. And now uh, we turn to Ms. Lan Hao, general manager from Lia Yu Group. And we know that during the pandemic in Dalan, your uh, company was uh, the only one uh, that uh, accepted uh, fish products from Russia. And uh, we and our colleagues are very interested to know how the situation is uh, developing right now and what can be done in order to speed up uh, the uh, delivery of the fish and um, the delivery so that it is it goes faster. And why should you go to Dalan and not to Tsindao? and thank you. Dear colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues from the Federal Agency for Fisheries, good afternoon. I'm very glad to take part in this global fishery forum. It's very important for me and for my company, Lao Yun, to uh, take part for the first time in this forum. And uh, it was very interesting because we were visiting various stands at the exhibition and we've learned some new things. And our cooperation, Lao Lun, would like to express our gratitude and to wish success for this forum. So our company was established back in 1945. And it is located in the southern part of Lao Dun Peninsula. And uh, there is certain specificity. It is a coastal province of China uh, in uh, the northeastern part. And we have a large port. So more than 42 ports altogether. And uh, it is one of the largest ports in the far eastern part of China. And um, over um, these 70 years, we have become a full-fledged food-producing uh, port in Asia. And our Laoyong port is one of 
the most important facilities. You can see on the map in red, the port is marked and uh, there our uh, corporation is located. It is our main venue and we are quite close to Dalan city. Since the early 1990s, we have been cooperating with the Russian Federation and over these 32 years of fruitful cooperation, we've achieved a lot. We have many friends in uh, fisheries industry in Russia, and we sincerely hope that in future we will be developing and expanding our cooperating, our cooperation in fishing resources, and we will be moving uh, forward, and uh, we will be promoting the development of fisheries industry, reaching the maximum potential and locking the maximum potential in terms of the figures. So our cooperation with our port, so we'd like to expand it, um, working with our Russian colleagues in various areas areas. So first of all, we need to expand the volume, the scale of our cooperation. On the slide, you can see how our port looks like. And we hope that it will help our cooperation, our Lao Yoi cooperation, to use all the existing capabilities and opportunities of the port facilities. And uh, we will be able to render a more high quality service to our Russian clients. And uh, on top of the slide, you can see the vessels at the port. And on the right hand side, this is the warehouse for the transship. Uh, that we offer to our Russian clients and also refrigerating transshipment that is being offered. And our refrigerating uh, warehouse also on the bottom of the slide. So our refrigerating capacity and processing is quite huge in terms of the scale, more than uh, 1.5 uh, million. And um, uh, our Russian products are being stored right there for future transshipment. And annually, uh, it is 600,000 tons per year. Last year, during the lockdown and the pandemic, the Lao Oi Corporation have been handling the frozen products uh, from uh, Russia, and we transshipped uh, 300,000 tons. And uh, this is uh, the largest uh, volume. It, is, it accounts for 80% uh, of uh, all the products uh, from Russia. We have state-of-the-art contemporary technologies. Uh, we expand uh, the volume of uh, imported uh, goods uh, transshipments, and there are prospects uh, for higher, for bigger volumes. There are provisions in the port to receive international large uh, ships and to repair the ships and uh, there are comprehensive logistics uh, services available. We also have uh, customs uh, clearance and customs uh, services uh, and so the uh, company is uh, very proactive uh, in uh, interacting with uh, the local authorities. We have started the standardization and betterment improvement of all the processes. So it's not only the high level work with the Russian clients, but uh, we can uh, offer the whole range of services and uh, together with the cold uh, storage, cold uh, chain, we can uh, deliver the best uh, possible services. That's the first thing I meant to tell you about. The second issue, we uh, hope that uh, we will be able 
to increase uh, the level, to have more Im import uh, from Russia. We are all aware that uh, pop the population of China is huge, and it's one of our advantages. Uh, we have the largest market of uh, fish consumption, of uh, seafood uh, consumption. And the Laoi company is located in the north of China, and uh, we have the largest uh, wholesale market. The sales are large. Uh, we have a special uh, trading platform to sell products. At the same time, the north uh, west of uh, China is large market and uh, we are the largest uh, trader of uh, frozen goods we are the largest distributors so these uh, retail centers and distribution centers uh, open up uh, new opportunities for promotion of russian goods next lao lao yui company pays uh, attention to providing services to our partners. We, our track record is 70 years. We know how to work. The warehousing capacity is uh, very large. And so we can uh, process uh, more than 40 thousand tons of products. So we hope on developing the uh, cooperation with uh, Russia when uh, importing seafood and uh, fish uh, products. Three, the cooperation should expand, especially it uh, refers to Arctic, to the to Arctic krill. We have been dealing in uh, krill for more than 12 years. Our share is more than 30% of the market. And in 2023, we achieved uh, new heights uh, of uh, both uh, catching and uh, selling krill. We have uh, vessel of our own. It's a new ship and uh, we built it uh, for fish and krill. It is uh, state of the art. It has a refrigerating capacity for krill. It's a special, a special krill catching ship. So the ship uh, has uh, a lot of uh, functions as uh, i have mentioned it is uh, freezing krill storing krill and uh, consequently it, it is uh, also used to process krill we can uh, produce uh, products uh, from uh, krill and uh, in the field and uh, we can also make a krill meal aboard the ship so we can uh, expand our products and uh, we can produce oil from krill for example it is high quality and it meets the highest uh, international standards so all these uh, products the volumes will be coming up and uh, we hope to develop a cooperation with our Russian colleagues in this uh, area. That's uh, about it. That's where, where I would like to stop. I would like to invite from my colleagues uh, for cooperation. And uh, I hope that uh, our work, our cooperation will be productive. Thank you for your detailed talk. I would like uh, to wish you successful 
uh, happening, and uh, I hope you will have more partners uh, after taking part in the exhibition. I would like to invite uh, all to Dalian. That is the city that uh, connects uh, Russia and China, not only to work, but uh, to enjoy the sightseeing in the city and uh, Chinese uh, culture. I would like to give floor to Ms. Li Nai Bin and from Dalian. And uh, what's your company is doing? Is it the import and the export and the processing? You have a lot of suppliers of the fish products, and uh, the Russian, your Russian colleagues, your potential uh, partners have a question. What's your approach? What are your criteria for selecting partners? What is important for you when uh, procuring products? And uh, what is important for you to have uh, easier sales of the products at the Chinese market? The floor is yours. Dear participants, dear delegates, Good afternoon. I am thankful for the invitation to take part in the forum. Allow me to say a few words about me. I am from the Tia Heng company from Dalian. My name is Nayat Bing. Our company is cooperating with Russia indeed, and we are importing the Russian seafood, we import uh, Kamchatka crab, cods, sole, and the other fish, and approximately for $400 million per year. In 2014, we established a, a Russian-Chinese trade zone in China, and uh, this year we invested uh, 1 billion 300 millions uh, to create uh, the industrial park of uh, Russian uh, products. It uh, includes uh, the pens for growing Kamchatka crab, different uh, laboratories uh, for growing, for farming seafood. And uh, the industrial park uh, has got uh, workshops uh, for processing the uh, Russian products. Uh, we expect that uh, in July 2024, the industrial park and all the enterprises over there will be commissioned and start operating. So. When we select uh, the partners, uh, we are guided by their goodwill, by their reputation. The reputation should be good. Another thing is the quality of their products and uh, then how good their business is. Thanks uh, for your answers. Uh, Ms. Uh, Li Nai Bin was brief and uh, concise and uh, uh, she is, used to speak slowly. And uh, why so? Because she has been uh, listening to the interpretation and uh, she, she has a very good command of uh, the Russian language. And uh, I would like to thank the interpreters because uh, they're doing their work and uh, they're doing uh, great uh, for us uh, to communicate for one another. I would like to thank the interpreters and uh, Ms. Li Nai Bing. I would like to give floor to our last but not the least speaker, Mr. Alexander Sapozhnikov. He is from the group of companies Russian Crab. I have looked at the statistics before our session and the Crab indeed has a large share. It is number three at the Chinese market and in short, in brief, your company is one of the few few successes of uh, the Russian export that has been uh, verified and is associated with the brand. What would uh, you like uh, to get? Uh, what kind of support would you would like to get uh, from the Chinese authorities? Let me switch on the microphone. 
Dear colleagues, uh, thank you for giving me the floor. I would like uh, to welcome all those who are interested in the crab business. So let me tell you about uh, how we have been entering the Chinese market and uh, how we are developing the brand the Russian crab. Because it's not that easy, by the way, there are hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, companies in China and uh, it's not that easy to emerge there and uh, make uh, the your uh, brand uh, noteworthy in China. Not all uh, the uh, brands, uh, not all the brand names have been registered in China. We, the work is ongoing. Our company, unlike uh, the companies that uh, have been in existence uh, since uh, 1945, is young. We exist uh, just a bit more than five years. And we are present at the Chinese uh, market since uh, 2020. Earlier, before that, our Chinese uh, partners uh, failed to notice us. And in 2019, after launching the auctions, taking part in the tenders, we became uh, outspoken, and, but uh, the Chinese market uh, for us uh, was uh, a terra incognita. However, we have uh, undertaken efforts. We were enthusiastic uh, promoting our company. We started uh, studying China from all the different aspects in all the different areas. What is essentially a market of uh, premium crab and what's the position, what's the status of Russian crab in China altogether? There are some 260 to 270,000 tons of premium crab produced in the world. And crab, at least that's our prediction forecast, is that 27,000 tons. China is uh, will be consuming by the end of the year some 27,000 tons. On the face of it, it's not that much. And when the story began in the supplying crab in China in 2017, 3,000 tons, then 5,000 next year, 9,013, 16, and now we have 27,000. So the market is growing, and this growth is quite intensive. And of course, it's our merits as well. As of today, we are supplying 30% of live crab out of all the crab produced in Russia. And it means that the path that we've chosen is quite a complicated one and we do commit some mistakes but it is efficient and we will be glad to tell you more about what we are doing and what we plan to do in future so talking about the first steps that were made it was to study their food preferences and characteristics of uh, products that are consumed in China and various preferences depending on the provinces and regions. It is well known not only for crab producers, but for everybody who is entering the Chinese market and coastal areas are consuming live products predominantly. And uh, the center for the trade of live crab is undoubtedly Shanghai and up to until now a significant part up to 80% of all live crab entered China through our border point Kraskina and in the part of China Ninchun city probably the pandemic has 
helped us to look for new ways to deliver the crab and about 60 percent are being delivered to southern parts of China and Dindun, and Dalian and Ninhan, the smaller parts. And besides them, cold crab, refrigerated crab, you know, besides live crab, we supply ready-made products of crab, which uh, have been boiled and refrigerated. But I will tell you directly that uh, due to the fact that the American market, the US market, has closed down, China is uh, oversaturated with such type of products. And if the selling rates are maintained at the same level as of this year, the reserves of this product will be sufficient for China for two years to come. That's why we focus primarily on selling live crabs. And we achieved great success in that in terms of quality. It is about 97, 98% of uh, the uh, A, B category of live crab, the so-called premium crab. So what followed uh, the study of territorial preferences? Of course, we were seeking for partners. When we started our activities in China, we used to have only three, four partners. And uh, now we have uh, uh, not less than 15 partners. And all the partners are appreciating our work and um, they value partnership with Russian crab company. We are absolutely reliable. And I've heard from Chinese partners that this is a characteristic that is very important for them. We didn't let them down, not even once. We haven't deceived them, and we do not have any debts. And one of our main principles is that if you want to trade well, you have to have uh, fair principles and uh, just principles, and you have to study the preferences of your partners. So, as of, to as of today, we have a number of aspects that we are observing currently. What impedes the trade? For example, if we talk about customs duties, importing to China from Russia has the duty of 7%, while from Korea, 5.6%, New Zealand, Chile, and Norway, and Canada, they have the zero rate. And of course, this is the story that put some obstacles on our way. And if you looked attentively at the previous slide, same Norwegian, Canadian companies, for example, Norwegians are introducing, are bringing in um, the kings crab and from Canada they bring about 6.5 thousand tons and that of course gives them competitive advantages and we do not understand uh, which are the reasons for that and of course we would like to work on that in order to uh, resolve somehow this matter and to change the rules of the game to have the unified system and the equal conditions for everybody and the second part it is quite complicated to cooperate with large Chinese banks because in a number of cases they set such requirements that cannot be actually fulfilled. And to work with them becomes almost impossible. 
and that is pain for us and that is uh, why I'm drawing your attention to that and uh, of course we would like these matters to be resolved on the state level all the rest that is being done is working with the Chinese market and its representatives today we have a following task. In China, they have 1.5 billion residents. Only 300 million people actively eat crab, consume crab. So there is a lot to work on. There is much room for improvement. And this is necessary work to be done. Because if we take that into consideration uh, that uh, Chinese people know about our crab, but uh, many of them, large percentage, has have never um, tasted uh, Russian crab, and they tend to eat products coming from other countries. And that is maybe due to the fact that we are quite new on the market and haven't supplied crab to the Chinese market for a long period of time. But if we take a look at this 51% figure of uh, growth, the growth in uh, China of uh, Canadian crab over the last five years, then we have to say that it has been achieved using the support of the National Canadian Association because it promotes and it helps with the, the um, proper positioning and developing development of the national brand. We are doing that uh, quite independently. And I'd like to emphasize that the Russian Export Center is helping us in organizing exhibitions, events, and they are rendering us financial support. And certainly it is the most reliable uh, partner in promoting our um, products all over the world. We have had exhibitions in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, in China. So we would like to extend our gratitude to the colleagues from the Russian Export Center but unfortunately, universal support in, develop, in the development of our sales, we do not get it. So no one has given us this support. So how are we promoting our brand? First of all, it's about trade marketing. So we established a representative office in China. We hired Chinese employees, two wonderful Chinese girls. And uh, they are real professionals in what they do. And they do not only satisfy our needs, but they demonstrate a great example of how you should do your work. And uh, regularly, we um, organize presentations and tastings of these products. The next uh, tasting will take place on uh, the 20th, 23rd of September in Shanghai, because it is an indis indispensable part of our activities um, in order to make people understand that this is a well-known uh, brand. On the left-hand side, you can see it's our brand, uh, the way it looks in China. And uh, it is uh, being recognized already by our partners. And such boxes have been manufactured in China. And the trademark is put on that. So it is uh, already uh, seen on the shelves of um, Chinese supermarkets. Besides having registered a trademark in China, we pay special attention to the packaging and polygraphy. 
and also the special receipts, recipes that we use, and we published uh, some pages in Chinese languages, language, and uh, we've published some information in mass media, and we are actively working on that because China is one of the most telephonic uh, powers. They use a lot of um, communication methods. There is no other country like that in the world because for Chinese people, a phone, a smartphone, uh, it's about uh, half of uh, their lives. If they uh, leave a house uh, without um, phone, it means uh, almost the same as uh, living without their pants on. So it's uh, a very important channel of communication to be developed. And promoting a brand is a complicated task. So here, of course, we need help and support from our Chinese partners and the Russian Export Center. And the main part is, of course, uh, our uh, work to deliver and to supply unexpected high quality products and that is exactly what we are doing right now so far we have not been able uh, to produce the full uh, crab um, boiled crab that is in high demand on the chinese market but what that is what we are striving for we will be increasing the volume this year and next year as well and it means that there are still niches that we have to master and to take on the market. Let's go back to this slide where we'll see that the northwestern part and the central part of China and the internal, internal Mongolia, they do not eat crab much. In Harbin, they have only two crab restaurants, but that is a traditional thing. These are traditionally meat provinces, agricultural uh, regions, and the income level is uh, lower there in comparison with the southern part of China. We do understand it, and uh, we try not to abandon them fully, and we are working on that with uh, our Chinese partners that are buying crab from us and we are trying to make them understand that uh, it is important to uh, promote um, the development of crab and opening some small restaurants there and certain promises have been made and we we've made certain progress in this regard as well and that is what i wanted to tell you about how we are entering the chinese market about the presence of our trademark and brands on this market and we think that in the nearest future the volume of live crab on the Chinese market will be brought up to the level of 40% and maybe even more there is a huge potential we will have uh, opportunities we will have uh, the second wave of bidding we will be developing our own brand and that is uh, the step towards uh, the future success thank you very much uh, Thank you. Quite uh, interesting. There are not that many Russian brands that, that uh, are being promoted in the Chinese market and associated with uh, Russia. You're one of the success stories, so we wish you all the best. Indeed, uh, there is a culture of carp. Uh, Oleg Kobikov has been talking about that. And uh, I can confirm that, that there is a culture of crab eating. And I've been living in China for one and a half years. And uh, there are festivities, uh, holidays. And uh, I hope that uh, there will be such uh, uh, heights uh, of uh, 
awareness uh, in China and that there will be festivities and holidays of uh, Russian crabs. And it is important to develop the culture of consumption of uh, crab. Some time uh, ago, nobody used to drink coffee in uh, China. Starbucks uh, invested and uh, they did uh, develop uh, the culture of consumption of coffee by doing the PR. Well, colleagues, uh, we have uh, 15 minutes. I can uh, take a few questions uh, from the floor, taking into account uh, that uh, there uh, it's necessary to do the interpretation. Then, if you feel like asking a question, and uh, please do so, make use of the microphone. Yes, we do have a, a question in uh, row two microphone. Yes, uh, I wonder. I wonder what uh, non-mandatory certification should uh, the uh, Russian supplier have to have some advantages at the market. So, who this question is for? I think uh, Ms. Li uh, Naibin might answer. Is there some kind of uh, certification that uh, the Chinese consumers uh, might be interested in? Of course, uh, when uh, there is an advent of Russian uh, products, goods at uh, the Chinese market, the, those uh, should be registered. A certain number should be assigned to them, and the number will be registered with the Chinese uh, customs and all the respective uh, authorities. Then the product uh, will be allowed uh, at uh, the Chinese market. So that's uh, the requirement of the Chinese customs. And it refers to different products, for example, fish meal. So registration number is needed, and all this is prescribed in the agreements. It's not our personal agreement, but uh, it is uh, the registration number and uh, the certificate of conformity. That will be enough. So I think uh, Ms. Li Naibin, after the end of the discussion, you can uh, address her. I am sure that uh, Ms. Li Naibin will not be against it, and uh, you will be able to get in touch with uh, her and ask uh, your questions. And uh, as uh, there is uh, a Russian saying is saying, there is uh, no need to take uh, your uh, own Samovar to Tula, and uh, if there are any outstanding questions, uh, you can uh, address uh, the members of the Chinese uh, delegation. And uh, I think uh, we can take another questions, and uh, then we will conclude. Any other questions? Or time for dinner? And uh, we had a lecture on the great uh, Chinese crab. Time to have a snack. OK, let us then close the discussion. Dear friends uh, from China, I would like to thank you for taking the long road and coming to St. Petersburg. And uh, we are lucky with the, the weather. And uh, I hope you will enjoy the, your stay in St. Petersburg. And I would like to call upon uh, the Russian participants to visit China. Thank you.